have to help put this all back. Us? I'm going for the record. Taking mail is a crime. Either a 211 or a 907A. You know he did it. That makes you his accomplice. His pursuit of free fresh fruit had driven him to crime. Accidentally. You didn't know, George. You're a monkey. I'll do it. I want to get back to my game. You'll take all day. I'm older, smarter, and faster. Oh, yeah? How about whoever returns the most packages fastest gets to play your game? You, Charky, and Neighbor Monkey can be a team. I'll beat you all. His name is George, and you're on. Three, piece of cake. Anything for this building? <laughs> Hold it. That says 15. <laughs> we have to find one that says 8. You're gonna have to move faster than this. While Betsy and George searched, Steve kept on delivering. We don't even have a package for eight. What a waste of time. <sighs> this is my sixth. Have you even delivered one? He's too fast. <laughs> you organized them. Good job, George. None for eight, but we have three packages for 14. Even numbers are on this side of the street, odd on that side. Okay, <laughs> let's roll. So they set out to try their system. Turkey helped too. Steve ran fast, but his packages were out of order, while the Monkey Girl Dog Team delivered their packages in a row. I've delivered 11 packages. Hey, where'd all the packages go? We just delivered our 11th also. So whoever delivers their next one fastest wins. 20? Back across the street again? We're gonna win! He's going far away. This one is for 9N Avenue. <laughs> there is no 9. What do we do? <laughs> There's 7 and 11. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Number nine! <laughs> you found it! Well, now, I was there when that package was delivered. So someone must have stolen it. Uh, send a policeman. Uh, send two policemen. Uh, no, four. I want someone arrested. <laughs> found it. <laughs> We get to play the game? No, you had to win to play. All right, you can play. <laughs> yeah, George! You did it! I can't believe it! It was my game. I left it here. Where could it have gone? I was beating the record and I was on level seven. George didn't find the farmer, but he found the pump. <coughs> the 
This is when good watch pigs go get their farmer. They needed a gate opener pig. How could such a little monkey move a big, heavy pump? George could use a bike to move the pump. Maybe the wheel should be on the pump and not on the monkey. All done. Less snaggy legs. Uh, want me to wrap it? Hmm. You know what? I, I like the snaggy legs better. Can you put them back on? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no problem. As long as you buy it. <laughs> I'm thrilled. Even with wheels, George needed help to pull it all the way back to the house. The goat sure liked to pull. He was the perfect choice. Or maybe the pigs would do it. But when he opened the gate, they ran to do their watch pig duties and get their farmer. Wasn't there anybody who'd help? The chicks were willing. But the cow was a lot stronger. <laughs> All right, got it. What is it? Something wrong? Oh, I think they're trying to tell us something. They're trying to tell us all the pigs are loose. Get them! <laughs> that cow was so good at towing a pump that it went right past her. <laughs> Before long, he'd pumped all the water out of the house. George, I'm home. Wow, that new rug makes the whole room look cleaner. George, come see what I bought. George? George knew the room was still a little squishy. But he had the feeling there was something else he forgot. Mm. Mm. George! Well, whatever he forgot, he knew he was going to hear about it soon enough. To George, it was a perfect morning, eating and reading and having nothing better to do. But there was one thing he was supposed to do. George, yeah. didn't you promise to clean up this room yesterday? <laughs> you can't leave toys lying around. Someone could get hurt. 
Lucky for me, this wall was here. Now, please, clean up, George. When I come home from work, we'll spend the evening in our nice, clean living room, okay? Rolling on the car looked fun. Except for the slamming into the wall part. <laughs> if one car was fun, imagine what you could do with two. George had to show his great new car shoes to someone. George couldn't wait to see the look on Hunley's face. <laughs> that wasn't the look he expected. <laughs> Hunley didn't want monkey handprints all over the clean doors. George didn't know how to turn around and go back. I don't know. We have too many roller skates. Now, what can we do to make people more interested in skates? Well, how about having a roller skating monkey give demonstrations? And just where are we going to find a roller skating monkey? The skates are our gift to you. You just skate in front of the store whenever you can. <laughs> mm, you'd better give him another pair, hon. He's got four feet. Well, I thought he had four hands, but fine. Two pairs it is. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's see what you can do. Uh, maybe he should practice outside. Yeah, gotcha. Now you practice, little Mister. Then come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you ever think we'll see him again? If you can't trust a monkey. Who can you trust? <laughs> George liked his new skates. But what were these black things for? <laughs> George thought that even Hunley would have to admire his skates, especially since now he knew how to stop. <laughs> Oh, 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 let me help you with those. Uh, Hunley, you're in charge. Woo, woo. Monkey on wheels looked wrong, but a proud, sleek dachshund on nice wheels. George knew exactly what Hunley wanted to do. Being a monkey in the big city can be an exciting experience. <laughs> isn't perfect. <coughs> oh. <coughs> wow, we could really use some fresh country air, huh? The man with the yellow hat knows when the time's right to get his monkey out of the city. Take a deep breath and fill your lungs with good, clean country air. 
<laughs> ah, it's good to be back, isn't it? You can let the clean air out, George. There's plenty here. Well, George, looks like Bill built a bunny hutch in his yard. Want to go see the bunnies? <laughs> there you go. Hey there! Got George with you? <laughs> How'd you know it was us? Hmm, well, guess. Hey, I just got bunnies. Want to see? <laughs> George had never seen a bunny up close before. You like bunnies, George? Uh-huh. Do they have names? Sure. There's Fuzzy, Whitey, Brownie, Spotty, Black Ears, Cottontail, and Herbert Nenninger. And that's their mom. Ah! Wanna pet one? <laughs> Which one? Brownie? Whitey? <laughs> Fuzzy. Fuzzy's cool. There's some... Things you need to know about bunnies before you pet one. Oh no! It's time to deliver my papers. Ooh. Sorry! Come back tomorrow and you can pet them all. <laughs> well, you're just gonna have to wait till tomorrow, George. George could barely stand it. Who can wait a whole day to pet bunnies? Going out? <laughs> Be a good little monkey. <laughs> George thought he could keep the bunnies company while Bill was away. They were so still, so quiet, so fuzzy. Bunnies, bunnies. Bill wouldn't mind if he petted one bunny, just once, if he was very, very careful. <laughs> the bunnies were so still and quiet and fast. They were almost too fast to see. Definitely too fast to pet. And absolutely too fast to do as they were told. Their mom knew enough to stay in the hutch. But George wasn't taking any more chances. George decided he'd better figure out how many bunnies got loose by counting their bowls. Seven. That meant he still had to catch seven. At least they couldn't get out of the yard. Hunley was proud to be a dog who couldn't be distracted. His mind was always on his job. Whether his friend the doorman knew oh. it or not. Oh, what is it, boy? Hungry again? <laughs> Elevator's here. Good morning. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. Enjoy it. Good morning to you, too, Hunley. <laughs> mm. I 
I know exactly what you're thinking. Hunley was thinking that with George out there, the city might not survive, or worse, become completely disorganized. Who knows what his hungry boy wants? Can I read your mind, huh? The smartest wiener dogs are always the most misunderstood. George wanted to take the man with the yellow hat to see where he'd done his job. In Chef Biscetti's kitchen. Oh, Giorgio was a big help to me. He was especially good at cleaning up a mess. Well, he's had a whole lot of practice. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid I have no work for you today. <laughs> oh, you know what? My friend, Mr. Glass, needs help across the town, and you would be perfect for the job. <laughs> oh, George, I don't have time to take you across town. Maybe another day. Uh, well, uh, I can take him there if it's okay with you. <laughs> oh, great. All right. Do you promise to be a good little monkey? <laughs> <laughs> the job is at the building my friend owns, the Glass Palace. Now, like I told you, Chef, I need a window washer who can work way, 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 way up high without getting dizzy. That's six ways. Uh, that's a lot of ways. Uh, but Mr. Glass, Giorgio's a great climber. He's a monkey! Congratulations. <laughs> I need every window clean by 2.15. Can you do it? <laughs> well, here's everything you need. And a cool cap. Now, window washing is serious work. You take your work seriously. I like that in a monkey. Never mind what people inside are doing. Don't be curious, or you'll get into trouble! <laughs> George promised to be good. But little monkeys sometimes forget. It was hard not to look inside, but George concentrated on his work. crowded city. What's more relaxing than driving out to the country for the day? Oh. <sighs> okay. Sometimes the drive is slow. Oh. But it's a good time to think about relaxing stuff, like feeding ducks. That was the worst traffic ever. But the day's not over yet. Let's feed the ducks. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Rankins. Uh, something wrong? The chicks wandered off. My chicken is very upset. If I don't find them before dark. Yeah. Not much time left to feed ducks, either. I'll help you search. 
You can feed them without me, okay, George? Uh. But stay by the duck pen. I don't want you to get lost like the chicks. Feeding ducks is like a relaxing brain massage. <laughs> Jumpy Squirrel was a good jumper. And an even better food finder. This was great. George had never had ducks swim all around him before. If ducks swam all around, it meant he was floating down river with ducks. It was almost like being a duck. Let's see if the chicks are along the fence. Hey, maybe they squeezed out here. Then they could be anywhere. Huh? <laughs> maybe they'll figure out how to find their way home again. At that very moment, the chicks were trying to find their way home. But they were bad at it. Really bad. And speaking of lost, George was too busy being a duck to notice he was floating away from home. Fast. <laughs> Jumpy tried to warn George because he didn't want his friend to get lost and take all that food with him. Soon, they were in a place they'd never seen before, which made George curious. Jumpy thought they should jump onto that small boat on the right. Or was it on the left? And it wasn't small. It wasn't even in the river. But Jumpy missed home. People sure are buying a lot of coffee makers. I just wrapped 15 in a row. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. George wanted to play with the wrapper people some more. But he had to get these pants home. <laughs> George hadn't been gone very long. But when he got back, the present had disappeared. <laughs> oh, thanks for picking up my pants, George. <laughs> I know how curious a little monkey can be, so I put the present away. That should take your mind off of it. <laughs> but hiding the present only made George more curious.
this was the first time George noticed the walls were wrapped. It looked like wrapping on top of more wrapping. <laughs> Maybe there were a hundred layers of wallpaper under here. Or not. Since he reached the end, George tried to put it all back. But it didn't want to go. Then he thought of a way to make this the perfect bathroom for the professor's birthday. Is that you, George? Make sure you wash up before Professor Wiseman gets here. <laughs> and would you make sure that bowl of her favorite fresh fruit is out where she'll see it? <laughs> you can't get away with that. <laughs> You didn't wash. This hand is all sticky. Okay, now, wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened in here? Uh... Oh, Professor Wiseman, help me hide this mess. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, George. Everything okay? Oh, <laughs> I'll be right out. I got your favorite fruit. Help yourself. Ooh. <gasps> Is this a benangerine? You can't put skins on fruit, George. Only nature can do that. Mm. <laughs> on the other hand, nature doesn't make benangerines. Uh, sorry, I I'm... Happy birthday from George and me. Oh, you didn't have to. Would you like to help me open it, George? Woo! <laughs> I never would have guessed that's what was in this big box. That's uh that's why it was wrapped that way. Oh, my favorite symphony. You remembered. Thanks. Let's listen to it during dinner. Oh, here, I'll get that. George figured he'd better eat something. Because this was gonna take a while. George wondered what a rubber band would grow into. <laughs> or a feather. George was going to grow all kinds of exciting things. The man with the yellow hat hadn't finished his speech. George could grow the rest for him. Blah, blah, dee, blah, bleedy, -de bleed, blue, blah, blah. This would be the best speech ever. Mm. Hi, jo Have you been just sitting there waiting for me the whole time? Oh. You weren't just sitting there waiting for me the whole time. <laughs> oh. When the man looked like that, it meant George was about to hear a long lecture. So, you see, seeds, nuts, acorns grow. 
My socks, the radio, the can opener don't grow. <laughs> okay, now, we have to dig up all those things you buried. <laughs> oh. Oh. George, where's my speech? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we have to dig up my speech first. <laughs> Unlike Jumpy Squirrel, George didn't know how to find what he wanted. Everything smelled like dirt. <laughs> hey, you digging a swimming pool? Uh, oh, <laughs> no, Bill. Uh, George was being a squirrel and buried my speech. We can't find it. Well, I'll help. <gasps> Wait, I know someone who can really help. She's a great digger. No speech here. Oh, digging a pool there, are you? George buried something and we're trying to find it. Well, I've got a metal detector I use to find coins and such down by the lake. Maybe that'll help. Cool. Uh, well, my speech isn't exactly made of... Well, no. Ahoy! <gasps> Maybe it's what you're looking for. No, my speech isn't made of me Ooh! Are they pirate keys? That uh, could be. Maybe to a treasure chest. Oh, uh, no. We're, we're not gonna find my speech, and I can't rewrite it in time. I'll just have to skip the tribute. George didn't have the talents of a squirrel, but he did have the talents of a monkey, which meant he could see really well. <laughs> you found it! The speech! Well, that's not made of metal. This is the air that inspired that wonderful speech. Are you planting something? <laughs> it's a long story. Oh. That's not a peanut. Looks like something you buried is growing. <laughs> Maybe you are a little bit squirrel after all. The apartment building where George lived was a very orderly place. And that's how Hunley liked it. They're here to clean your carpets. People came. And people went. The elevator arrived, and people came down the stairs. Everything in Hunley's lobby was orderly and neat. Well, almost everything. We can't go back into the apartment until the carpet is dry, George. So you stay here in the lobby while I run my errands, all right? Okay. Oh, oh, and in case you get hungry. Ooh. I won't be long. Uh -huh. Hunley didn't think George should be eating a sloppy apple in the lobby. Ooh. <laughs> 
George decided it would probably be better to eat his apples someplace else. <laughs> Hunley had never been through this door before. But he was pretty sure it was against the rules to be out here. Hunley didn't think George would ever get in that way. Hmm. So he'd find a better way. All right, move it along. At least there was one thing Hunley knew for certain. Home was this way. Or... Maybe that way. Hunley was getting worried. He could just imagine the terrible things that that sloppy monkey was doing to his lobby. When Hunley found his building, it was even worse than he imagined. Ooh. But then Hunley saw that it wasn't his street at all. Ooh. But that meant he had no idea where he was. George wasn't sure if he'd magnetized the pan. He had to find something to test it on. Okay, George, let's go. They are going to look so great on the refrigerator. <laughs> Their mission completed. George was ready to rush home, except... Ah, we have one more stop, remember? We need a new refrigerator door handle. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, they don't make parts for an Ice Cubby Omega anymore. It's too old. How about a nice new refrigerator? Old? It's a classic. I love it. No, I, I won't give up till I find an Ice Cubby Omega handle. <laughs> George felt like he'd never hang his drawing. He saw it. George told him the whole story and that he'd be right back with the man with the yellow hat. Uh, what do you say? I don't know. <laughs> I don't speak monkey. When he got back with the man, it was gone. Um, is what you wanted to show me gone? Hey, where's the pan? And your drawing? 
George remembered putting it down, but it was gone too. <laughs> Ma'am, did you see a pizza pan with a nice drawing stuck to it? Yeah, uh, uh, before or after they took my old refrigerator to the junkyard. <laughs> Look, I, I don't know how it happened, but if your drawing's here, George, I I'll find it. Why don't you watch the big magnet while I talk to the owner? <laughs> Excuse me, George sure loves magnets. Could he watch? Well, sure. <clears throat> now don't go anywhere. <laughs> this is a powerful electromagnet. Hit that red button and watch what happens. <sighs> you see? That turns the magnet off so we can drop stuff. Hit the green one. That picks stuff up. <laughs> Hit the red button and drop her in the crusher. George couldn't let his best drawing ever go into the crusher. <laughs> no, not the lever, the button! Chances of finding a pizza pan and all this stuff. That's it. And that's the exact handle I need. Uh, how much do you want for it? Ooh, I gotta give that crane man a raise. <laughs> <laughs> George and the man with the yellow hat did everything they set out to do that day. Good night, Joe. <gasps> George. <laughs> now he'd done it all. Good night, George. <laughs> wanted to go in there. Maybe there was another way. There was no way George's arm could ever reach the bottom of that hole. Hi, have you seen George? I sent him to the store a while ago and... Store? I saw him running past the store down the street. Oh, the construction site's that way. I hope he's being a good little monkey. This wasn't as easy as it looked. <laughs> oh. 
There had to be a machine for this. I inspected every girder last night, and I can't find the problem. Well, the only way to be safe is to tear it down and start all over. Otherwise, a big wind or strong shaking might make the whole thing fall down. What's that sound? <laughs> Stop that! The site's closed! This site isn't safe. I'll turn off that jackhammer. <gasps> Look, a broken water main. That's what weakened the foundation. It was hidden. had nothing to do ah. with this. Mm -hmm. I am so sorry. I didn't know one monkey could knock over a building. Can I pay for lunch? No, George didn't cause that. That side of the building was unsafe. Now I'll have to knock it down and start all over. No, you don't. We can save the whole thing by changing the design. Hmm. Very angular, modern, and it would save money! I love it! How can I thank you? <gasps> I know! Here! Well, what are we waiting for? We'll bring back blueberry waffles for everyone. <laughs> and that's how Curious George helped design a building. And got blueberry waffles, too. It was a perfect summer day. The kind of day that just makes you want to kick something over and over. <laughs> which is just what George was doing. Ah. <laughs> hey, you're improving, George. You just need to keep practicing. <laughs> oh, sure. The way to get better at anything is with lots of practice. Oh, hey, you better get going. Your dog's sitting charky today, right? If only there was a way to dog sit and practice kicking. Hi, George. Thanks for doing this. I'll only be at the hairdressers for one hour. I'd take Charky with me, but some people are allergic to dogs. You're welcome to sit Charky in my apartment. <laughs> or you could stay outside. Charky likes the park. <laughs> All right, have fun. Betsy and Steve say once or twice Charky has slipped away. So please keep an eye on her.
If Charky could get off her leash this easily, George would never get a chance to practice kicking. Unless he did it right here. It wasn't the park, but it'd do. And best of all, it had its own soccer goal. Some dogs don't know the difference between play and practice. Chasing Charky did have its rewards. Charky wasn't going to squeeze under there again. <laughs> 